let the lawsuits begin. Here it is, one of the first cases against uh, AI generation software, uh, this case, Stable Diffusion. There is a class action that has been filed for it. And I'm gonna put links to this below, but there's a really great site that they put together, Stable Diffusion Litigation. Um, Matthew Butterick, who is a lawyer, but before being a lawyer, he was actually a designer, I believe a typography designer, and he actually wrote typography for lawyers. Um, so you can see why it's a very well put together, very uh, aesthetic looking website that describes a bit of the whole situation. But I just wanted to, he has the history of AI software, of, of AI for image generation. Um, but I just wanted to take a look at what they're actually claiming and give you some thoughts on that. So easiest spot is actually on page 10 here uh, where it goes through the common claims to the class. So something you need to know about AI software, stable diffusion software, is that it essentially needs to train on something. So it has to be fed the information that it's going to then use later on to generate images, generate text in the case of something like chat GPT or other text generators. You know, just like us humans, we need to, you know, see, hear, read, smell to take in all these, everything that's around us to then be able to come up with our own thoughts and output a writing, an image, a photo, whatever it is. Um, that's what stable diffusion has to do, but it's one of their claims is that essentially what they take is the stable diffusion software is actually making physical copies of the images of everything that it's using in order to create its new images. So that's what this direct copyright infringement is here is that they are directly making copies of it by storing them so that the software can learn from it. Then they're also saying that it's vicarious liability. And what they mean there is that the software is allowing others to make infringing copies of the originals. And they're going to have, you know, theories here that these are considered derivatives of the originals. So anytime you change an original work, whatever you change of it is considered a derivative. And uh, derivatives can also be things where you translate one book from English to Spanish, uh, taking a play that's in a form of a book, turning it into a movie, that creates a derivative, the screenplay, and then also the movie. Um, so there's things like that. So by taking all of this prior artwork that's been out there and then using that to create new artwork, they're alleging that derivative works are being created by that. And essentially the derivative work is an infringement. They're also claiming that there's DMCA, Digital Millennium Copyright Act, which you know, seems crazy, but it came out you know in the late 1990s you know, a little before I started law school, um, that it's, you know, over 20, 20 plus years old um, and how, how much things have changed. But back then they even were able to, you know, have different provisions there. And one of them is about not removing copyright management information. So that could be anything from a watermark to metadata, that if you delete that and take that away from a digital file, that's a violation of the DMCA. So they're claiming that they also did that, you know, in the output images, all of the original metadata, any watermarks, any things like that is, is being pulled out of it. So that's a violation of it. They're also claiming that there's right of publicity because you're able to search for, you know, in the style of Pablo Picasso, things like that. But the artists that are the named artists, you're able to search in, in their name for in the style of this person so that it will create an artwork similar to them. So they're saying that that's a right of publicity violation because someone might think that that's actually artwork created by them when it's not. And they're just using um, 
their name in the software as, as a prompt. You know, it's unlawful competition. That's more of a state claim. You know, they're claiming Lana, Lanham Act, which is federal. Um, they're asking for injunctive relief, which is essentially saying, hey, you can't allow this software to be publicly available, that you have to stop making it available. Um, and then they say, of course, what they know the anticipated defense is going to be is fair use so is, is what uh, stable diffusion is going to allege. So I'm saying that this should be a class because of that issue, the fair use issue, uh, which is probably going to be a big part of this case is, is throughout the class. So this is uh, going to be a huge case to watch with the future of AI chat, AI, you know, video, AI images uh, creation. So, you know, we'll just watch and see now what happens. Um, but it will, it will definitely be a, a big turning point in the future of AI generated content. If you like these, feel free to subscribe below.